Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Monday, October the 28th, 2024. So today, Monday and Tuesday, is perhaps going to be a little bit difficult. There are a couple of aspects which are sort of colliding with each other which I do need to discuss and this really is my main topic because we have a square aspect between Venus and Saturn, we have a sesquiquadrate between Venus and Mars, then on Tuesday we've got uh, a sesquiquadrate between Mars and Saturn. So Venus, Mars and Saturn sort of come together and I think this could be a big event and okay I don't want to exaggerate you know we always get excited about big events in astrology and very often the event happens and uh, we think that something terrible is going to result but you know actually it's all a bit of a damp damp squib so I'm aware of that but still I I do think that uh, Venus, Mars and Saturn could be causing problems on Monday, today and Tuesday. And I just want to look at what this might mean. And also I want to consider a few famous people who it might might be might be particularly affected by. You can see some of these people in the thumbnail like uh, Megan and Justin Trudeau and Chuck Schumer. I don't know what Chuck Schumer is up, he, up to. He's... Uh, Chuck Schumer is, of course, um, a leading Democrat and uh, closely involved in uh, in Kamala's campaign. And then there is, uh, I don't know about the pronunciation, Pierre Poinlevé, the um, leader of the uh, Canadian opposition. Yeah, he's impacted by it as well. Of course, there's one other person who's impacted by it who I haven't got a, uh, didn't put a photo there of her because I didn't want to put people off but yeah Kamala is definitely affected by it I think she could be affected by it hugely but anyway I'll be talking about that specific influence on particular people later in the video first of all I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today which is Monday October the 28th 2024 just the usual reminder if if uh, you enjoy this video, I'd be very grateful if you were to like it. And if you enjoy the video and you're not subscribed, I really, really would be grateful if you were, were to subscribe. Anyway, uh, let's look at what's happening uh, today. So here is the usual chart for today. Uh, I'm going to try very hard to be quite quick in this video because I've got no power. Um, I'm sort of relying, everything's relying on my computer battery and I'm wondering if I'm going to lose it or whether they'll fix the power problem. I don't know. Uh, I'm looking at, out of a window, I'm looking at a power utility vehicle with flashing orange lights and uh, so hopefully my computer battery won't let me down. I think it probably will let me down. But uh, anyway, let's see, what's, let's see what's going on today. So looking at the horoscope for today... The positions of the planets on Monday, October 28, 2024. You can see that uh, the moon is in late Virgo in New York at noon, 23 Virgo. Uh, so, uh, you know, for most of us, it is, a, it is a moon in Virgo day. And the moon in Virgo is uh, making... Let's see what's it doing. It's making it's making a sextile to Mercury, which if you can see that Moon and Virgo making a sextile to Mercury. So that's uh, uh, that's that's I suppose quite useful. I mean, it's a Moon and Moon and Virgo sextile Mercury in Scorpio. It's a time when you know many of us should be able to express ourselves quite well, maybe not in a particularly dramatic way, but I suppose we will have the, the sort of the subtlety to make ourselves clear and sort of get people to listen to us. And so uh, I think that uh, 
that could be useful. You know, we always got to listen to our feelings. I think we can listen to our feelings with, you know, with that Mercury and that Mercury and Virgo sextile the moon, you know, Mercury and Virgo, sorry, Mercury and Scorpio, moon and Virgo sextile Mercury and Scorpio, Mercury and Scorpio. Yeah, it's a nice communicative aspect, but it's, it's, able, it's able to communicate in a way that isn't especially um, dramatic. And, you know, Mars is, uh, Mars is trying Neptune. Um, Mars trying Neptune. I suppose that's where we put our energy, isn't it, Mars? So Mars aspecting Neptune, we want to put our energy perhaps into things which are a bit otherworldly. There could be a spiritual uh, element to that Mars, Mars trying Neptune or perhaps an artistic element because Neptune is about the imagination and art and you know, what we want to do with our imagination and so if you've got any artistic inclinations, I do think that Mars, that Mars trine Neptune could actually be, be very useful. But as far as the aspects which perhaps bother me a little, which I will be talking about in detail towards the end of the video, that, you know, we firstly, we've got, we've got Venus, there's Venus, Venus in Sagittarius is trine, is square Saturn. So Venus square Saturn is a difficult aspect and Venus square Saturn can say something about relationships, how we how we get on with people. You know, Venus is the planet of relationships. Square Saturn, it can make relationships a little bit difficult and there can be a focus perhaps on the material side of things and it just may be difficult to difficult to express the sort of love and warmth that you might expect with some relationships. I mean, okay, there is that moon sextile Mercury, which uh, which is nice, which is certainly useful uh, in terms of understanding other people's feelings and being able to work around other people's feelings. But I would have said that Venus square Saturn is, a, is really a higher order um, aspect. I think it is potentially going to sort of dominate the day. And so there may often be be a certain sense of distance with that Venus square Saturn. In fact, maybe distance might be actually be be a good thing. Also, we've got Venus sesquiquadrate Mars. So Venus sesquiquadrate Mars is uh, is an aspect again about relating, and Venus sextile Venus sesquiquadrate Mars is how we are relating, and whether or not we're able. To really sort of express ourselves sort of emotionally, Moon sextile Mercury is really having to do a lot of work to keep things moving. Uh, Venus sesquiquadrate Mars can be about uh, perhaps not finding people attractive, perhaps finding people unattractive, at least in a in a passing sense. I mean, it is about charisma at the same time, but it's it's a kind of a quite tense charisma and uh there is a sense that it there is a there is something relating to sort of sexuality and desire about Venus sex Venus sesquadrate Venus sesquadrate Mars but you know Venus and Venus and Mars are somewhat going in the wrong in the different directions i suppose you could say well that is Venus in Sagittarius which is you know light and free quite spontaneous but then mars in cancer can be rather brooding and we should not forget that mars is starting to move towards an opposition aspect with with pluto so that could that could be a bit of a that could be a bit of a problem now that is probably the main picture for today i mean there are there are some lunar aspects but I'm trying to be as uh, quick as possible because uh, I've got no power and the battery on my laptop may be on the verge of uh, collapsing. But uh, yeah, don't forget the Venus opposition Pluto. That is creeping up on us over the next few days and that just sort of adds to the tension, I think. Quickly turning to the picture in Sydney, Australia. So in New York at noon, the moon is at 23.52 Virgo. If you it's in Sydney, Australia at noon, the moon is at 16 Virgo. So the moon is 
is sort of earlier in the sign in, in earlier in Virgo in, if you're in Australia and uh, New Zealand sort of East Asia but I don't think it makes a big difference I think okay you could say that in Australia you've got more of this moon opposition Saturn but then Venus is square Saturn as well so I don't think there's going to be a great deal of difference in terms of how the planets are experienced between Australia and uh, and the Americas, uh, for example. So let's uh, quickly look at the heliocentric picture. So remember, from a heliocentric point of view, that we have got a uh, we've got a Mars. Mars, we've got Mars Saturn stuff going on, haven't we? If I remember rightly, yeah, we've got Mars. Mars is still very close to that square of Saturn, so that's important because on Tuesday we've got Mars sesquiquadrate Saturn. So there's a real Mars Saturn influence, whether you look at it from a geocentric or a heliocentric viewpoint. And so, uh, I do think that Monday, Tuesday could be extremely frustrating, and we may just not feel that things are working working very well so turning to the 12 signs um, these are my forecasts for the 12 signs for today which is monday october the 28th 2020 2024 aries aries you still feel as if there are just things that need to be done. Uh, you can't help it. Uh, you want them to be done properly. And your probably your sense of detail is finer than usual. And I think that you'll be quick to notice your own mistakes and also other people's mistakes. So I would suggest that you get a sense of perspective you know people do mis make mistakes you make mistakes and normally they don't bother you but today they might sort of just they might just bother you more than usual and you know that that might reflect how you how you express yourself um, and how how you occur to other people remembering that there is a Venus is square Saturn today, uh, and tomorrow we've got Venus is sesquiquadrate quadrate Mars. I think that there may be a sense in which your relations with other people could be somewhat tense. You may find it just difficult to relate and just difficult to be on to you know to to really express yourself emotionally in the way that you would like in, in, in terms of a way you feel the feel is satisfactory and you know do consider how you occur to other people there may just be something about you that rubs people the wrong way and uh, that's not very I know that's not a very nice thing to say but you know I'm only talking about today and perhaps tomorrow so don't assume Aries that everyone everyone likes you today or everyone finds you wonderful and i know that's yeah i sorry that sounds awful i mean i'm sorry to say that um and i suppose i'm looking at things from the worst possible perspective with venus sesquiquadrate quadrate mars i mean there is a different way of looking at venus sesquiquadrate quadrate mars you know venus sesquiquadrate quadrate mars can be attractive and desirous it can be but you know with venus mars aspects it's you know what do they say in in England? They say it's like Marmite, isn't it? I mean, Marmite is this sort of um, spread. If you don't know, Marmite is this spread. You, it's, it has a particular yeasty taste, and the the advertisers of Marmite like to put out the idea that you either like it, love it, or you hate it. And that might be a bit about you and other people. There are some people who are going to really love you, think you're incredibly attractive, but by the same token, there could be people who think the opposite. So under those circumstances, it might be a time, Aries, where you should perhaps be uh, 
choosing choosing your company carefully. But I'm not saying it's going to be a boring day. Yeah, it might be a frustrating day. I think it could be. I think tomorrow could be frustrating as well because we've got heliocentrically, we've got Mars, your ruler, square Saturn, geocentrically. We've got uh, actually Mars, sesu quadrates, Saturn tomorrow. But I think you might well be starting to feel this. So, um, so Aries, uh, yeah, there is stuff going on. There is things you, you want to do, but don't expect it to be particularly easy. Taurus. Taurus, probably the main aspect today is a square aspect between Venus and Saturn. And Venus-Saturn squares traditionally are not are not a bundle of laughs. Um, you know, you know, Venus represents you, your ruler, and it's square Saturn. And it just may be difficult to get things done. Um, it may be that everything you do, you're coming up against resistance. So, you know, whatever your plans today, uh, don't feel that they all have to be achieved. Perhaps you need to focus on the things that uh, things that are really important to you, the things that the, the thing the, the things that the, the things that matter. And that might just be the best way the best way to proceed. Now, Venus is not just square Saturn. Venus is also sesu quadrate Mars. And so with Venus sesu quadrate Mars, that could say something about the way you get on with other people, how well you get on with them, um, to what extent you get on with them. And you just may feel that there is a certain tension in the air that things are not going as well as they should, or you may just be aware that you and other people have fundamental incompatibilities. And uh, that perhaps is the way it is. Or I suppose if you're, if you spend your time with another person, you spend a lot of time, yeah, a lot of time with them, they're with you all the time, they've been with you for decades, then it's a different picture. I think with that Venus Sesu Quadrate Mars, it just may, may be that right now, you and another person find it difficult to relate to one another. And perhaps with Venus Square Saturn, it may be that from an, an emotional perspective, there just isn't the flow. But yeah, that's what's happening today. I mean, and tomorrow to an extent. I mean, in, in a way, today and tomorrow, are you know, they are an extension of each other, though tomorrow the moon does moon change sign and moves moves from Virgo into Libra. And, you know, I, I suppose I need to say something positive about that moon in Virgo sextile Mercury. You know, moon in Virgo from a Tauron perspective is actually quite a creative place for the moon to be. And the moon is sextile Mercury. So I think... Perhaps you should not be focusing on close relationships, but you should be thinking about, you know, how you can communicate uh, who you are and what you want to do. And perhaps if you can just focus on talking about creativity and uh, making things happen and, you know, what you're good at and uh, not worrying too much about getting really close to people. I don't think that's the way to do it. Although I suppose Moon Sextile Mercury may be about, you know, how you communicate. Keep things on a perhaps on a verbal level. And but just if things get too emotional you might feel that things get stuck. And you know other people might be annoyed as well. It might be a day when you notice that other people are frustrated and it's possible that they may be dumping their frustrations onto you. I mean that is that is possible. Gemini Gemini, there is a lot going on today, which I've sort of already talked about. You know, we've got Venus Sesu Quadrate, um, Mars. We've got Venus Venus Square Saturn. I think I think these aspects could have an influence on you, and it may be a somewhat a somewhat difficult day. But I don't think, in a way, that is anything that is that is personal. It just it just might be about the world in which you're living. And so, Gemini, uh, you, 
you perhaps need to limit your activities to things that you feel comfortable with and so you know don't feel that you absolutely need to be super sociable i don't think that's i don't think that's really necessary do what you know do what do what is easiest and just stick to what you know and trust you know that is you know that is very much a case with you have moon and virgo you know moon and virgo from a gemini perspective is about sticking to what you trust you know you don't have to go beyond your comfort zone that i don't think is necessary and the moon in virgo does make a sextile to mercury so moon sextile mercury is perhaps about you um doing things that you uh want to do doing things that you need to do um doing it actually in a way that is very competent so if you're focusing on things that you're comfortable with you can really do a very good job it's just when you start doing things that you're uncomfortable with that you don't fully understand perhaps where there are emotional complications you know that's that's when there could be could be pressure and dealing with other people's complexities you know is perhaps going to be important if you have to deal with other people it might be best not to deal with people who are emotionally complicated that might be the best way around it and because you know, there is this venus saturn square and that venus you know venus is in your opposite sign of sagittarius and it's square saturn and it may be that you know you feel that you have a set of priorities and these priorities are very important to you and you you want to pursue them as 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 quickly as you can and you want to get going on them but uh somehow things things are slow and you have to deal with other people's sensibilities and so maybe if you, if, if there's something that's really important to you it really has to be done today gemini then if possible maybe you should just try to do it on your own in your own way and in that way well if things go wrong you won't be able to blame anyone else but also there'll be there'll be a sense that you're in control and i think that if you can be in control and not have to worry too much and about other people and uh, their complications then um that's probably the best way of doing it you know tomorrow is going to be very different well not okay we still have mars sesu quadrate saturn which we have to talk about but uh that that's that's the main aspect tomorrow but that's going to be that's going to make things difficult for all of us regardless of our sign but tomorrow the moon is going to libra and i think moon going into an into an air sign from your perspective could actually be be pretty good so i think that tomorrow is actually going to be better uh, than today cancer cancer you're as usual pretty sensitive i, I think we need some sensitivity at the moment you know because uh there are some difficult aspects here you know i've talked about venus square venus square saturn which in itself venus square saturn is a very insensitive aspect and other people may not be particularly sensitive but i think that you are i think you kind of understand what's happening and you just may take the view that basically you've you've seen it all before now, this is nothing particularly new to you but uh it's it's still you know it's still not brilliant but it's other in a way it's other people's problem and i suppose what you can do cancer is just try to make sense of it and try to understand what's going on and perhaps try to tell people what they're thinking and try to explain to people that the situation isn't quite as difficult as it seems and you know we do have this aspect moon sextile mercury today and i think with moon sextile mercury that strikes me as about you being being cool calm and collected and understanding what's going on understanding the complexity the complexities of what's going on but through it all being able to sort of maintain 
your rationality and reason and don't get drawn in uh, to sort of other people's complications. I mean, other people do may to an extent may try to make things complicated. And yes, the moon does make a sextile to Mercury, but it also makes a makes an opposition to Neptune. So that 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 aspect is is very much there. And moon opposition Neptune can be about confusion, you getting confused. But why would you get confused? I suppose you might get confused if something happens that you don't fully understand or you stray into an area that you're not familiar with. But maybe you've got a choice there. If you, if you stick to what you know and trust, then... I think you should be okay. It's not a time for being for being speculative or for getting involved in ideas and activities that you don't understand, that, that don't make any sense to you, because the moment you do that, well, anything can happen. So your job is to make sense of things and you're going to be very good at making sense of things. And I think other people are going to appreciate it. But what you don't want to do is stray into the unknown. It, it's unnecessary, and I don't think the results would be particularly fortunate. Leo. Leo, it's perhaps a somewhat difficult day uh, because... Uh, you know, we do have some aspects which, okay, they're not your problem in one sense. You know, we've got Venus square Saturn and we've got uh, Venus sesu quadrate Mars and tomorrow we've got Mars sesu quadrate Saturn. And so it is difficult to make sense of it all. And you might take the view that other people are not always being particularly reasonable. Uh, you know, they have their own, I suppose they have their own agendas and they want to do things um, they want to do things their way and their way is probably not the right way of doing it and you may feel that you have to look after your own priorities because you are aware that something is perhaps slipping away a bit and that may may be connected with moon opposition neptune you know moon is opposition neptune moon is in virgo moon is in a part of your chart that's often connected with money. So moon opposition, Neptune, when it comes to money and material things, I think that you have to be somewhat careful and you have to be very focused on what matters, on on the details. Don't don't be speculative and don't don't try to pretend that you understand things because things are not really particularly comprehensible. And so if you really can, I would uh, I would keep it simple. And also, in terms of other people, it's just going to be difficult, really difficult to know what's going on. Uh, I think that other people are going to make things as as complicated as possible. Maybe not deliberately, but everyone has their own cloud, <laughs> and it's difficult to understand what's happening behind that cloud. Who is who? Who? Are the, who which people? Who? Which people are you dealing with? Who are they? What are their motives? It's just going to be really difficult to understand what's going on. And so, Leo, it might be best if you let other people deal with their own clouds and you don't, um, you don't get involved with those clouds because you're not going to be able to understand what's going on. You know, Leo is a fixed sign. Leo needs to have a certain sense of normality and okay maybe not normality but at least knowing what's going on people a certain sense in which people are straightforward i think a lot of people are not going to be straightforward today and it may be that it's just a question of just accepting that and you know focusing on you know what is important to you and you know we shouldn't forget that you know the sun is the sun, your ruler, is in Scorpio. And, you know, that is a sign which Scorpio is a sign is um, at the root of things. It's at the heart of things. It's at the base of things. And it it's not a time to be 
uh, too experimental. In fact, focus on giving yourself uh, giving yourself security and stability. It's 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 that kind of day, and you should not be going out of your way to be looking for excitement because I think today excitement is probably the last thing you need. Virgo. Virgo, the moon continues to move through your sign and you know, perhaps that is fortunate. I mean, today... You know, as I've been saying to, to, to the signs, as I've been going through the as, as as I've been going through them, that today is somewhat difficult, and it just may be that a lot of people don't fully know what's going on, and a lot a lot of people I think could be quite sort of frustrated and annoyed, and there are things they might be getting angry about, and. It may not be entirely your problem, but you can't help but pick it all up. And that, that's that's Moon and Virgo. Moon and Virgo is very sensitive to the environment. And I think it's a good thing that you are sensitive to the environment. You know, there, there's a lot of things that you, 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 you're you aware of. Other people might not be aware of, but you're certainly aware of it. And that allows you to make adjustments i think that you're going to be very good at making adjustments to take into account what is happening and you know what the situation on the ground really is like and you know if you if you look at the details the details of people's behavior that will give you an get that will give you an understanding of where they're all going and what they're thinking what their motives are so Look at people's traces. Um, look at the look at the footprints in the snow. Which way the footprints are going, and that will give you a good idea, of, yeah, about where they're going, where their motives are, and perhaps it will also give you an idea about we you know whether or not they can be trusted. And it seems that some people are, I think, rather difficult. Um, in fact, particular people might be difficult. There is a square aspect between Venus and Saturn today, and this this Venus Saturn square with you know with Venus, you know Venus in Sagittarius, Saturn in Pisces. You know Venus in Sagittarius may represent your own sense of harmony, what you are trying to create around you, and Saturn in Pisces may represent someone who is trying to disrupt that harmony and so you perhaps are aware of you know you know one particular person who is just making your life more difficult than it needs to be but i do think that you're able to deal with the issue because you know the moon is making a sextile to mercury and mercury is your ruler the moon is in your the moon is in your sign. So I think that with that moon sextile Mercury, you're going to be able to explain yourself very well. And if you have anything that's irritating you, annoying you, I think I think you'll be able to to just talk to other people about it. And you'll be able to bring to bear your grievance and you know, if you're able to be subtle and sensitive, then I think in the end, your views will, will be understood. And in a rather slow but but solid way, I think you'll be able to find that you, yeah, that you eventually get what you want. Now, what I'm really saying, Virgo, is that actually, in terms of, you know, the 12 signs... Um, you're probably in a better position than a lot of other people. I think I think it's because you understand what's happening and you're able to just get things in perspective. And it's a perspective that maybe other people can't get, but you can get. So uh, I think that uh, you shouldn't feel any great sense of grievance today. And, you know, of the 12 signs, I think you're perhaps one of the strongest. I won't say you're going to get five stars out of five, but maybe four stars out of five. Is that good enough? So it should be... 
an okay day, at least in a relative sense. Libra. Libra, tomorrow the moon goes into your sign. And I, that's good news. It's something to look forward to. But uh, today the moon is in Virgo. And with the moon in Virgo, you, it may be that you feel that you're you want to hold something back that you can't fully be yourself and matters are made more difficult by the fact that we've got venus making a square to saturn so venus is your ruler it's uh so you know when we want to know about you know what's happening in what's happening for librans uh, then we you know we we spend a lot of time looking at libra looking at venus and with venus square saturn you may just feel that something is holding you back that that you can't be yourself that there's some there's some detail or some obligation that you that you have to think about that you have to worry about and it's just preventing you from expressing yourself in the way you'd like to in the way you'd like to and so there may be a bit of a a bit of a weight on your shoulders but uh you know venus square saturn may have a certain advantage in the sense that venus square saturn may give you an understanding of what is holding things up and it may be an understanding that you don't fully appreciate but if things if if things aren't working yeah i think that you you know what it's all about and because you know what what it's all about you can you're maybe in a position to kind of uh, do something about it or at least get a sense of time you know you can perhaps see okay something might not be working for you but you at the same time you can say okay well this this is going to last one or two days maybe and we shouldn't forget that venus is a ruler of time you know traditionally venus was a chronocrator and chronos the greek for saturn means means time so saturn is about time and i think that uh, with venus square saturn you're just aw- you're just aware of perhaps how long it's going to take and that sense of timing and a sense that even if things are if things are difficult there is a, there is going to be a time where things are going to get better and i think that's something that you're going to be very aware of Venus is not just square Saturn. Venus is also sesquiquadrate Mars. And this Venus sesquiquadrate Mars uh, could be about relationships and other people. And with Venus sesquiquadrate Mars, I'm not convinced that relationships are going to run particularly smoothly Uh, it might be that you just feel that you and another person are just different I mean okay you may be just different for today or for tomorrow but you know Wednesday is a different matter for example but you're just aware about you're aware of individual differences and in certain situations things might uh, might clash and you might actually be aware of incompatibilities and issues of attractiveness and unattractiveness could really matter today you know librans do regard sort of harmony and aesthetics as important and you know sometimes you don't like to talk about it but it's there and you know, some Librans, there are things that they, things around them that they, they just don't find attractive. Um, they don't find aesthetically pleasing. Now, that could be about an environment. It could be, I don't know, about a house. It could be um, 
about a crowd of group of people you just don't find it appealing but it can be about another person so in terms of meeting people particularly new people people you don't know you don't know very well but privately there is a sense of is this person attractive is this person unattractive um and uh, yeah it's not something that people often want to talk about but i think it's there and that sense of balance and social balance for you libra is i think at the moment going to be very important okay it's not something you necessarily need to discuss in an open way but privately i think you, you need to respect your a set your sense of aesthetic harmony and you know if you find something unappealing then i think be honest with yourself about it um because it it's i think in many cases it's it's part of the libran nature though it is possible that venus sesu quadrate mars that there is something very legitimate that upsets your balance i mean so when i say legitimate i mean it's something that should upset your balance you see something that is just not right and you immediately want to do something about it you may even quite ag- aggressively want to do something about it or at least assertively want to do something about it it is it's because it maybe is a fr- an, an affront to you and i suppose if something is an affront to you then you have to work out you know what is the best way to respond and what is the what is the moral way to respond you know if something is happening which is not just an affront to you but is something that is immoral that is is just not right then you're going to have then i think you're going to you might feel compelled to respond and then you have to work out you know what is the best way to respond scorpio scorpio uh mars is your ruler as you know and mars is potentially under a little bit of pressure at the moment so from a heliocentric perspective you know that is you know when we put the earth at the center of the at the center of the solar system from a heliocentric perspective that's about uh you know we've got uh yeah we've got mars square saturn and you know that mars square saturn you know might be somewhat somewhat difficult it might be frustrating and i think you've actually been feeling a sense of growing frust- frustration perhaps over the last week or two that things have been uh slowing down and it's been perhaps difficult to get things done and it's been difficult to assert yourself and now well we've got mars make it starting to make a sesu quadrate to saturn and that mars sesu quadrate saturn is exact tomorrow and it's it's something i think that you you know you 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 you're really starting to starting to feel it and also today we have got venus sesu quadrate mars and venus sesu quadrate mars may say something about relationships and how you're getting on with people and it just may be that you you become aware that you and other people don't fully get on with each other and you certainly can't expect to be everyone's friend and you know venus sesu quadrate mars may be about some people not being able to relate to you i mean you might be able to relate to them you might think everything is okay but they may not regard things as okay so you could consider scorpio how you are occurring to people now i certainly don't want to make yourself conscious uh but it's just that with venus sesu quadrate mars you do need to consider what impact you're having it may be that in certain situations you are having the wrong impact or you're doing things or saying things that are sort of rubbing people the wrong way so be extra sensitive you know with other people particularly if you particularly if you don't know them very well but even if you know someone really well there still may be a sense that something isn't entirely right though you know venus sesu quadrate mars it is about attraction and 
in the right situation, you can be very attractive, Venus, Sesquic, Quadrate, Mars. There is a, a strong dynamic contact between Venus and Mars. But in the wrong situation, you might be not quite so attractive. And it may be just, it depends on who you're with. It depends on where you are. And in one place, you're a star. And in another place, you're completely ignored. So perhaps you need to think about who you're meeting who you're mixing with and where you're going because it might make it might make all the difference and 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 i do understand that at the moment with the moon and virgo your social life might be important and you know the moon is in virgo it's it's sextile mercury i mean that's nice moon sextile mercury because particularly mercury is in scorpio that suggests when you're with the right crowd of people you come over in the right way and yes you can be attractive and charismatic so that's good but just bear in mind that in the wrong place it might be a very different picture so um i don't i don't want you to be oversensitive and i don't want you to be too self-conscious but you know just you know make a real effort to um listen to other people not just listen to other people you know with your ears but with your feelings and pick up those cues and it may be scorpio that you can make small adjustments so you know when you first meet someone you might or you first meet a group of people you may not come over in the right way and you can pick that up if you're sensitive and then you can just change your approach and you change your approach a little bit and yeah that could make all the difference Sagittarius Sagittarius Venus is moving through your sign and that's great Venus moving through Sagittarius Um, it makes you uh, sociable it can make you larger than life Um, it means that you're open-minded and uh, you know you you can enjoy people's company and other people can enjoy your company but venus may be moving through sagittarius but today it is making a it's making a square to saturn and so you know with venus making a square to saturn it it may be a time when you feel that something is something is holding you back that you can't fully you can't fully be yourself and it may be that it's simply the place you live and the place you live and when I say the place you live, it may be your maybe your home, and we could be, and all the people you're living around, and your, and your family, and family obligations, and the obligations of you know the, the walls around you. That's just going to be getting you down a bit, and it may be that you shouldn't spend too much time on home and family today. I mean, it, it's kind of where you want to go, where you feel you should be going. But if you spend time focusing on things that are familiar, you may feel that in some respects you are, I don't know, you could just feel that you're dragged down and that it's just, it's just difficult, to, um, difficult to be yourself. I understand you do have to live up to your responsibilities, but you don't want your, your responsibilities to drag you down and i think in certain in a certain in certain situations they could and so um i i think that uh, you need to be a little bit wary of things that are things that are familiar and in in fact it might be best if you you know you spend time you know away from your home perhaps having a sort of a high relatively high public profile i think that uh, when you're in a situation where you've got people's attention i think that you'll be relatively effective and you're going to sort of understand what's happening and you'll you'll know how, you'll be able to understand how to behave and and also it's a day when you can you know sh- you can show people what you can do and Actually, that is a good reason 
perhaps why you need to be a little careful in terms of dealing with your family and, and people who know you very well because you know people who know you very well and it's often take things about you for granted you know, you know they don't they might you know they might love you a lot but they could still take you for granted and not fully appreciate you know what you can do whereas people who don't know you so well when you show them what you can do they're really impressed because they haven't seen it before and it's it's fresh so perhaps you should be focusing on people that don't know you so well where there is scope for surprise and where where actually Sagittarius you you can be appreciated because you have got things that really should be appreciated and uh, you just need to make sure that you, you get the right audience. So so Sagittarius there are certainly there's certainly the potential for having an unsatisfying day, but I think you do have a choice and just overall I think I would have suggested that you avoid things that are too familiar and people that are too familiar or at least don't give them every hour of the day you know give them a few hours of the day perhaps but most of the day you should um, you should divert to, you know if possible as many hours as possible devoted to things which you're not 100% familiar and find people that you know do appreciate you because there are people out there who will really appreciate what you've got to offer capricorn capricorn you know, one of the aspects happening today is Venus square Saturn. And you could argue that Venus square Saturn is actually the, the main aspect today. And with this Venus with this Venus with this Venus square Venus square Saturn aspect, I think uh, you rep you represent Saturn, I would have said. And Venus represents the other person and that does mean that you have the possibility of uh, undermining people you could undermine people maybe it's because you're going to be overly critical I mean that is certainly that's certainly a possibility and so if you are overly critical yeah people may, may respond badly to it and you have to really consider how you're coming across and i think that it's important that you're not you're not too judgmental and i think you could be judgmental in terms of the things you say how you communicate i mean you know you're a good communicator no doubt about that you can certainly get your message across but the message you deliver may in certain situations be rather undermining and you also have to think about other people's confidence you know people some people you know they're not very confident and they're not sure of themselves and you know, if they are ignored or criticized they, they might not take kindly to it so you know perhaps what you have to do is certainly understand how you can occur to people understand the issue with venus square saturn but perhaps make a special effort to make people feel good at them, about themselves but also do it in a way that is realistic venus square saturn the good side about venus square saturn is is about realism and so perhaps if you feel you need to criticize anyone you you can sort of get the balance right you know 50 percent criticism 50 percent encouragement or maybe even 30 percent criticism 70 percent encouragement and so that that would be i think the right the right approach and also capricorn today and tomorrow yeah be careful how you go you know tomorrow we've got mars sesquicadrate quadrate saturn and i'll be talking about that again tomorrow but we've also got heliocentrically we've got mars square saturn and you know mars can be quite a difficult aggressive accident prone pla planet and i know that you know the average capricorn is very sensible is careful but there is just some possibility that you overstep the mark or that you're not cautious enough and that things, I suppose, 
might things might go wrong maybe you'll make a mistake and capricorn you should certainly be careful about doing anything that is dangerous or you know where you know where safety is important because um i don't know something something could go wrong but, and i'm not trying to make you paranoid by the way i'm just saying that there is this there is this mars saturn contact both geocentric heliocentric in the worst situation it could represent some kind of accident or breaking something or tripping up so you know be careful and perhaps don't be preoccupied and just be be aware and mindful in terms of what you're doing and what your body is doing and i suppose be careful with sort of machinery and uh, dangerous activities aquarius aquarius I would probably repeat the warning that I've just given to Capricorn because, you know, Aquarius, your ruler, like Capricorn, is Saturn. And so, you know, I've just been saying to Capricorn that they have to be a little bit careful because today, um, you know, there is a heliocentric Mars square Saturn and you've got that and... Um, tomorrow there is a um, Tuesday there is Mars Mars sesquiquadrate Saturn so you get the image there of Mars having potentially a a negative effect, effect on Saturn which would mean a negative impact on you and that might mean that you could get yourself into trouble and that might mean I suppose that it's worst having some kind of accident. Uh, again, I'm not I'm not trying to get, trying to undermine you or say that this is going to happen. I'm t- I just have to, I suppose, being an astrologer, I have to look at I have to look at things from the worst possible perspective. And chances are, nothing bad is going to happen. But you just could be a little bit accident prone. So just do be careful. Don't do anything that is risky. Uh, I mean, of course, you should never do anything risky, but I think today you have to be particularly careful. And if you're driving, just be careful and, you know, don't take risks. Don't be in too much of a hurry. And it also relates to other people as well. I mean, there is the possibility of maybe you and other people perhaps uh, falling out, arguing about something, finding something to disagree about. So that's that is a possibility that I think that you perhaps should be aware of and so um i would have said you need to, you need to take it easy and uh, maybe you shouldn't you shouldn't push yourself and you know we've also we've also got we've also got venus square saturn and you know with venus square saturn that may say something about you and other people uh, you know with you know venus is in sagittarius and you know that's very nice that the venus is in sagittarius it's it's um it's it seems to be flowing in sagittarius it can be very sociable there but right now venus is square saturn so with venus square saturn you may not be able to be as so- sociable perhaps as you had been in the past and it just may be that in terms of getting on with other people, there are a lot of blocks and frustrations. And these frustrations, you know, could could be about many different things, maybe about money, for example. So as soon as you start worrying about money, you know, bad things can happen. You have arguments about money, maybe, or uh, where there's money, there's a problem. And so it, when when dealing with other people, talking to other people, financial issues should probably be avoided, but it maybe they can't be avoided. And I suppose with Venus square Saturn, if a financial issue needs to be discussed and it's serious and you want to really make an impact, yeah, sure, you can do it. But it's Venus square Saturn is not exactly a time to be making friends and. I mean, you. I mean, it is a time in general for you to be making friends because I think you are quite sociable. But just today, with that Venus square Saturn, you're perhaps realizing that friendships often have their limitations. And yes, if you try to mix 
friendship and money, then there could be all sorts of problems. So uh, it may be that certain friendships, certain relationships should perhaps be avoided or you should um, just put things on ice for a little because there is something actually quite icy about today, Venus square Saturn. And it may be that there's something a little bit icy about you. And you know, some Aquarians are actually quite icy. Eh? It is actually a, an adjective that I do associate with Aquarius, um, that Aquarians can be quite aloof. And it can be very useful from the, from, for them to be aloof, not getting emotionally involved. And, and maybe... The, the iciness that can be integral to some Aquarians may be particularly prominent today. And it could actually, in a strange way, boost your charisma. It may make you a little sort of more attractive. There's something a little bit unattainable about you, maybe, with that Venus, with that Venus square Saturn. And so there may be actually an advantage of that Venus square Saturn. Maybe, maybe you can actually use it. Pisces. Pisces, it's a day when we've we've got some rather difficult aspects as you know, I've been going through the twelve signs and you know, considering, you know, what's going on in their lives and uh, we've got you know, we've got Venus Square Saturn and I think that Venus Square Saturn is going to have an impact on you but the question is is it going to have a good impact or a bad impact i mean venus square saturn if you've been listening to what i've been saying over the course of this video i haven't been particularly positive about venus square saturn and you know it's you know venus is a venus is the planet of relationships it's square saturn saturn is a planet of limitation but you may be able to use it to your advantage in a way that other signs can't you know, Venus is in Sagittarius. You know, that is Sagittarius for Pisces is very high profile. It's a high profile sign. It's at the top of the chart. Saturn is in Pisces. It's in your sign. And so Venus square Saturn may be about you being in control, that you're able to control your environment. You're able to come over as some kind of authority figure and... I think that uh, people will certainly respect you. They may not like you, but I think they will respect you. And you're able to, yeah, you're able to establish your authority. And things can happen your way. And this is a particular case if you have a position of responsibility, if you're working on you and, and people are working under you, or you're trying to organize people. Uh, okay, you don't have to be working or or have a business to be in a position of authority. Whatever that scope for you having authority is, you can maximize it. And I think that people will will take you seriously. And I think that they will recognize that you've got something on them, that you've got something that they haven't got. And it may be it may be just about talent, just just a skill, something something you have that you're very good at, and they understand you're very good at it, and as because they understand you're very good at at it, they you know they'll give you um, they'll give you some leeway, and yeah, they may not entirely like your approach, and it might make them nervous, but still. Yeah, they do. They 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 do they do respect it, and you know, in terms of other people, I think that you can you'll be very good at explaining to people why something has to be. So, if something has to be that other people don't want, but you want it and you feel it's necessary, I think Pisces, yeah, you'll be able to explain to them why this is the case, why it can't be any other way, and so Pisces. For, for all the 12 signs, it, it could be a somewhat difficult day, but I think you're going to be able to make the most of it. And it just may be a day when you, in the end, you can come over as someone who is quite authoritative. And I think that uh, you know, people might not like the fact that you're 
authoritative, but I think they'll accept that uh, there's no, perhaps there's no alternative. And those are my forecasts for the 12 signs. And now I want to look at today from the perspective of the I Ching. So I asked the question, what is Monday going to be like for those watching the I Ching section of this video? And the first hexagram I got was hexagram number 11, which is peace. Now that, in a way, kind of contradicts the astrology, doesn't it? I mean, it's a really nice hexagram, peace. You know, everything is in order. You know, the, the, you've got three... You've got three unbroken lines at the bottom. You've got uh, three broken lines at the top. The hexagram is balanced. It's not top heavy. Things are moving. And we just feel that things are running, things are running, things are running smoothly. So it can be, in that sense, a good day. And you know, so don't get too worried, perhaps, about what I've been talking about, you know, with Venus square Saturn, Venus, um, whatever, Venus, um, Venus sesquiquadrate uh, Mars, and we've got Mars sesquiquadrate Saturn tomorrow. So perhaps don't be too worried about it. The I Ching is giving a different view. Or is it giving a different view? Because there is a moving line here. And the third line moves third line from the bottom moves and with that third line from the bottom moving there is a sense in which we realize that nothing lasts forever so yes there might be a certain sense of peace people working together but we also recognize that things can be disrupted very easily and we just have to be we have to have to just realize also that uh, the disintegrating forces are there. It's the way it works. You can't have peace forever. And in terms of relations with other people, with this third line from the bottom moving, the I Ching does actually say that there are going to be hiccups. So it is picking up actually on what's going on astrologically maybe i shouldn't say that it's not that one thing is causing the other it's all asynchronous there's no sort of causation it's all about correlation and so we're going to find that certain relationships do run into hiccups like i was saying with venus square saturn but the I Ching is saying it's not a big issue provided we keep our cool people are going to be understanding so we can have a relationship with someone. That relationship can go wrong. There can be incompatibilities. There can even be arguments. But we can still, overall, be faithful to that person. We can be respectful to that person. So there can be respect and disagreement and conflict and understanding all at the same time. So this is saying... Just because you start, you, you have a disagreement with someone, just because there's an argument, just because there's an incompatibility, doesn't mean the relationship is over, because, or, or, or even that the relationship is at all compromised. Just remain faithful to people. Remain loyal to people, but still have arguments and disagreements with them. You can still have incompatibilities. That's the way it works. And this hexagram does move because the third line from the bottom is is shifting and that moves to a different hexagram and the hexagram it, hexagram it moves to is hexagram number 19 which is influence and no it's not i've got that wrong so hold on i need to uh, i need what I did was I just forgot to um, I forgot to change the label for it. So let me just uh, change that. It's actually uh, not influence. It's it's 
approach. Sorry about that. So 19, sorry, 11 piece, very nice hexagram. Um, but, you know, we are, we, we, we're loyal to people. We, even if we disagree with them, they're loyal to us. So we can get that it's just because we disagree with someone. It's not the end of the world. And this does shift to hexagram 19, which is approach. And approach is quite a sociable hexagram. And it's about us, I think, I th it's us being aware about what we can deliver and what we've got to offer. And, you know, the I Ching, the Wilhelm translation talks about teaching. So it's time when we've got a lot of wisdom to offer. And it's also about, about us, yeah, sh showing, showing, showing people what we can do, uh, what experience we have. And Greg Winkup, in his translation of the I Ching, he actually, I think, calls this hexagram leadership. So it is a time when we can show leadership, but it's not the kind of leadership in a dictatorial sense. It's leadership which certainly understands its limits. We, we can lead people, provide advice in a way that is good natured, is friendly, and I think that people will, will very much appreciate it. So, so maybe this I Ching is actually reflecting, you know, what's happening astrologically as well. Sure, there are problems today, Venus square Saturn, but the I Ching is just, is really saying we can get over them and we just have to keep calm and, yeah, be ready to show leadership and also be realistic. You know, we can't agree with everyone about everything and uh, I think we're going to be we're going to get over the problem so I think that uh, the I Ching reading for today is is really very optimistic so let me now turn to the let me now turn to the astrology so there is this configuration coming up which I really do need to talk about and so let me let me just explain what I'm talking about and what I'm what if you like what is bothering me so let's uh, let's look at the uh, let's look at the let's just look at the chart for today um, we'll, we'll might as well move it to move it to Pisces uh, sorry move it to Aries, put Aries on the left uh, so there's a chart for today and Aries on the left and so there's Venus square Saturn that's the first point and that Venus square Saturn we've also we've also got Mars here so you see Mars is sesquiquadrate Venus Mars is sesquiquadrate Saturn so you've got Venus Saturn square and you've actually got Mars on the Venus Saturn midpoint. So it's those three planets I'm concerned about today and tomorrow. And those three planets could cause a lot of problems for certain people or perhaps the world at large. And uh, so how, how would how would I conceive of that? It's a time of, I think, frustration for many of us. I think and I think that relationships could be very difficult but maybe not just relationships between people but maybe also the relationships uh, between countries and leaders and so overall it's a tense environment in which we are living and that's that's the way it is and so all of us I think need to be careful how we go um, today and tomorrow and don't do anything dangerous don't do anything reckless and we should accept with venus square saturn you know relationships could be difficult and there may well be incompatibilities now we can actually conceive of this chart perhaps better if we put it on a 90 degree dial so on a 90 degree dial uh if we if if we, if that's actually a 45 degree dial, we don't need a 45 degree dial. Let's go to a 90 degree dial. Uh, there we go. So 
with a 90 degree, degree dial. Remember, conjunctions, oppositions and squares are, are, are all conjunctions on the wheel and semi-squares and, semi and sesquiquadrates are shown as oppositions. So if we, there's that Venus square, Venus square Saturn is shown as a conjunction between Venus and Saturn on the 90 degree dial. And look, it's opposition Mars, because Mars is sesquiquadrate Venus, Mars is sesquiquadrate Saturn. So this is a very tense configuration here. Now, I just quickly want to go through a couple of people who I think might be influenced by this. So yesterday over the weekend, I was talking, or when I was talking about the what's going on for, uh, I was talking about Justin Trudeau a few days ago. And so here is... Justin Trudeau's chart and so with Justin Trudeau if we if we can if we see how this configuration is impacting Justin Trudeau so we'll put uh, Justin Trudeau on the sort of outer wheel so inner wheel so you can see that Justin Trudeau has his mercury at 12 degrees Sagittarius and so Venus is conjunct his Mercury. Now you might say, oh, well, that's nice. He's got Venus conjunct his Mercury, but he's also got Saturn square going retrograde square his Mercury and Mars is sesquiquadrate his Mercury. So that does mean that in terms of him communicating, and I understand that Pierre Trudeau is having real issues, you know, keeping his coalition together, and it's going to be really hard work. And I think he may not be able to communicate as smoothly as he had done in the past. And so Monday, Tuesday, I think that Pierre Trudeau is going to be under a great deal of pressure. Now, I don't know a great deal about um, Canadian politics, but I, as I understand it, the leader of the opposition is Pierre Poilev. Sorry about the pronunciation. Um, um, Pierre Poilev. So here's Pierre Poilev's chart. And Pierre Poilev has his son at 12 degrees 34 Gemini, square of the nodes. And so you can see, you know, if, you, if you, that you can sit, certainly see the clash between Pierre Poilev and Justin Trudeau, because Justin Trudeau's Mercury is at 12 Gem Sagittarius. Pierre Poilev has his son at 12 Gemini and he's got his north node at 13 Virgo. So basically, if you if you then go and go and look, go and look at what's happening to uh, Pierre Poilev, you know, you, you can really see it because you can see that uh, there's his there's his son. He's got Saturn square his son. He has got uh, Saturn on his south node. He has got Venus opposition his sun. So over the next couple of days, that clash between uh, Trudeau and Poilev is going to be very much in focus. And, you know, I know that Poilev is supposedly in a strong position. I mean, you know, he's seen as a future prime minister, but he's still going to be under a lot of pressure. I don't think it's just going to be a problem for Pierre Trudeau. I think it could be a problem for Pierre Poilev as well. And someone else uh, I want to talk about is is uh, Megan. Uh, I mean, the reason I'm in a bit of a hurry is because my laptop battery is is fading, and I'm just trying to I'm I'm trying to be able to do this before I lose I lose I, I I lose everything. So here's Megan's chart, and Megan has got her Venus at 13 Virgo, and so. Megan's Venus is under serious, serious pressure at the moment. And so, you know, you can see there's Megan's Venus. Uh, she has got Saturn opposition her Venus. She has got, um, she's got Mars semi-square her Venus. And indeed, she's got Venus square her Venus. I'm sure that, that Megan will try her best to keep it all under wraps. We probably won't go know what's going on. But I think 
Megan is not a happy camper over the next couple of days. I think it's good. she may be concerned about money. I think her relationship with Harry is going to be under pressure. So I think, you know, if you're a Megan watcher, you might want to see, you know, what is what's happening with Megan, because I think things could be going on with Megan that uh, perhaps, well, the chattering classes might want to be aware of that perhaps I should be above this. I should be worrying about not worrying about uh, Megan. But uh, Megan does the next couple of days could be really difficult for Megan. And um, maybe we'll find out something about it. Maybe we need to, you know, if you're interested in Megan and the royal family, you might really, really want to watch what's happening and what she's doing, what she's not doing and what her relationship with Harry is like and what she's trying to do financially and so forth. Finishing with American politics, uh, Chuck Schumer. Chuck Schumer is, uh, he is, let me get this right. He is head, he is leader of the Democrats in the Senate. That's right. I think I got that right. Not the House of Representatives in the Senate. And so I would have said that Chuck Schumer, Chuck, Chuck Schumer there's his Mercury, 13 Sagittarius. His Chuck Schumer's Mercury is under a load of pressure because he has got Saturn square his Mercury. He has got Mars, uh, Mars sesquiquadrate his Mercury. He's, you know, let's just let's just put it, do the wheels. Uh, Chuck Schumer and what's going on on Monday. You can what's going on today at the moment. So there's Chuck Schumer's Mercury. He's got Venus conjunct his Mercury. You know, he's got his Mercury quite close to Justin Trudeau. I don't know how him, how well him and Chuck Trudeau, uh, him and Justin Trudeau get on, but he's got the similar problem that Justin Trudeau has got. He's got Venus on his Mercury. That's nice. But Venus is acting as a trigger to the fact that he's got Saturn square his Mercury and he's got Mars sesquiquadrate his Mercury. So his Mercury is about how he feels, how he thinks. I mean, how he feels in terms of what his cognitions are so it's not really about feeling what how he's feeling perhaps about the race about the election and i don't think he's happy <laughs> i think he may get news that uh, perhaps suggests to him that things are going wrong that uh, kamala is going to lose so chuck schumer important figure in the democrat party there are things going on in his his life over the next couple of days which do not look do not look particularly good and but it's it is mercury it's more about how he communicates it's perhaps it's not fundamental and then finally there's kamala and you know i really didn't want to talk about kamala because i've talked far too much about kamala but uh really you know it's a situation where i just can't help myself so here is kamala's chart and here is let's put today's monday's positions around kamala's chart so kamala uh Kamala has got as we know she's got an exact sun moon opposition and in other words she was born on a full moon and Monday Tuesday look at Mars Mars is square her moon Mars is square her sun at the moment and it's worse than that because Saturn at 12:58 Pisces is sesquiquadrate her moon and it is Sesqui sorry, semi square her moon and it's sesquiquadrate her sun. And again, that is putting her under huge amount of pressure. Mars and Saturn are hitting the most important um important configuration in her horoscope. And I think that Monday, Tuesday at the moment is it's going to be a complete nightmare for her. This could be you know the most difficult time of the campaign i don't think things are going to really work very well for her and then venus you know venus is sort of acting as a trigger isn't it so venus is at 13 sagittarius so in other words venus is sesu quadrate her moon venus is uh, semi square her semi is semi square her sun so this sun venus sorry, this Venus, Mars, Saturn is hitting her sun, moon. And of course, don't forget in her natal chart, she has got Uranus. Um, she's got Uranus semi-square, her, sesquadrate her moon, Uranus sesquadrate her, semi-square her sun. And so that Uranus, she's got Saturn opposition, her Uranus. So, you know, this configuration, you know, it was in her solar return. And I think it, it sort of dominates her for the next couple of weeks with Saturn, 
really causing problems. And I think it's one of the reasons she's going to lose. But I think that, yeah, I think today and tomorrow could be really difficult for Kamala. Anyway, uh, that's all I've got to say for today. Uh, I've managed to be able to get through uh, without my battery running out. I've still got to worry about uploading it because uh, the power's gone and so there's no internet. But uh, hopefully you'll get to see this video um, at, at some stage. So, uh, yeah, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, um, I'd be very grateful if you were to like it. Uh, if you're not subscribed, I'd be very grateful if you were to subscribe. If you were to subscribe and if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thank you very much for watching and... I will talk to you again tomorrow.